Hello, and thank you for joining us for the 51st episode of That Show with Billy Wilson. The show brings together artists, musicians, photographers, personalities, and all sorts of fun and interesting people from around the world each Friday for a hangout. Tonight, we are joined by a fun panel, and one of our talks tonight is, is discussing bully prevention, and we're joined by visual art illustrator Aaron Wood. Our special musical guest, Devin Rush, will be playing a few songs for us for the last 16 minutes of the hour. Architect, Lauren Moss. And social media marketer and web designer, Seth Goldstein. And we also have Tibby, who's been circling me for the past half hour, going insane, and he successfully destroyed an entire book today. He ripped the whole cover right off of it. After a week of trying to rip it off, he finally ripped the cover off of my German picture book. I'm trying to get him around with my headphones here. But there's the boy, Mr. That's Tibby. That's a big cat. Oh. It's a lion. He is the big Hi, man. Tibby. It's and most lion. people watching are only here just to see Tibby. <laughs> oh, my God. How big is that cat? He's a 21-pounder. <laughs> oh, my God. Pound in the bush. It's like a lion. No, he looks like a bush. Nittany lion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they grow them big up there in Canada. Huh? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, he needs a lot of insulation for the winter. Wow, that's a big, that's a big Garfield. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's a big man. How old? And sometimes, I don't know. We, we, we adopted him and he'd been found in the forest, so he may actually indeed be my own line for all we know. But um, <laughs> he was estimated to be five years old and we've had him for about eight years, so he's about 13 years of age. Wow, he looks but good for his age. Getting, a little older, but he, wow. he's a very okay, nice look at the boy. size of that he's a big boy. Yeah, he's a big boy. Wow. He's a big boy. And he tells me what to do most of the time. Oh, I don't know. I believe that, definitely. I wouldn't mess with that. And we have another guest who, sh uh, who might be coming in late, uh, Zach Coomer, I think. That's how you say his last name. I haven't asked him yet. But he is a actor and photojournalist, and he... Um, is going to be like one of the stars in this new movie that's being released and he plays a bully and one of our topics tonight is dealing with bullying and it was like the topic of one of my vlogs this week and Devin who's joining us who's our musical guest is a spokesperson for an organization called Hey Ugly that deals with bullying and could you talk a little bit about that Devin? Yeah I would love to. Um, do, do you want to Talk about it now, or are we? Yeah, Sorry. yeah, we, we, talk, we talk about it now. Yeah, um, Hey Ugly is an amazing bully prevention organization. Uh, it Ugly is an acronym that stands for Unique, Gifted, Lovable You. And I go to schools all over the country, speaking to uh, the students and performing, doing a mini concert to build emotional awareness and self love in students to help them be part of the solution to bullying. Um, so the organization's focus is on the cyclical nature of bullying and we have an exercise, it's, it's the bully ball exercise. So it's got to do with, you know, how everything is cyclical and how essentially bullying is the cause of bullying. So um, we talked to the students about that and it's, it's been very impactful. And it's something that really, you know, like, I care about it because when I was bullied a lot when uh, I was younger and you know I, I found it very very hard to talk about and this week I did like a, a vlog uh, about you know because I wanted to you know talk to people about like a lot of the things that I had to go through and how I dealt with it because I, I back when I was younger like I just couldn't talk to anybody about it because I just felt like I don't know I, like it it just felt embarrassing to talk about how you know people would pick on me because you know you, you kind of almost want to hide the fact that you're made fun of or anything like that mm -hmm. so I think, you know, like, it, it also helps to, like, talk to uh, younger people about that kind of stuff and to uh, let them know that they aren't the only people in the world to and, uh, and that kind of stuff. And it is a, a great thing to do. Oh, yeah. The... Oh. Me there. Um, the, uh, the assemblies that we do are really interactive, and it's amazing the things that the students ask and the, the things that we end up talking about. Every assembly is different. Um, it's really, really, really eye and mind opening every time. Mm -hmm. 
And I was also bullied, so that's why I do it. I mean, I was bullied like crazy when I was in middle school. And I um, always said that if I could do something about it, I would. Um, I think the bullies are even bullied. I mean, that's the thing. Is I think that they were bullied at some point, and then they're lashing out and saying, well, I'm going to be an aggressor now because I feel, you know. And honestly, you kind of, I mean, especially like, you know, when I was a kid, I was bullied. I mean, I was picked on, I like to say. I, I never liked the word bully. But, um. I mean, he has to let the cat out. Sorry, <laughs> I got distracted by it. But um, <laughs> that big cat. But, but I always felt like you know, like there's something else going on there. And if anything, like I felt like when the bully would get in trouble, he would just get in trouble, and that would just make him he or she mad. Whereas it's, instead of giving them, you know, punishing them, they should be like, well, "Why are you doing this?" Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because you know, they're doing it for a reason. They're doing it for attention. They're doing because. They feel don't feel good about themselves. I mean, when you're being bullied, you don't give a crap about that. You're like, I'm being bullied, and I don't like that. But you have to realize that something screwed up over there. You know, well, not over yeah. there, but yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, we hear about you know the what all the time. The what? Okay, what is it? Bullying. Bullying's yeah. happening, and so we know that the why is the thing that we have to answer. And and exactly, you know, when we know that, so you know, with the cyclical situation that we have bullying is the cause of bullying so the the bully ball exercise that we do is I have this bully ball you know somebody threw it at me it's filled with all this hurt and it's 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 all I have to give so I take this bully ball I don't know what to do with it so I throw it at you Seth right and then you go oh my god and you're hurting too and I'm hurting and we're hurting you know and you I'll have yeah Kumbaya, mm -hmm. and you have this a couple choices, and you can take the bully ball. You could throw it back at me. You could throw it at Aaron. You could throw it at Billy. You could keep it for yourself, or you could drop the bully ball. And so, by bringing that to the to the student's attention, we say it's time to drop the bully ball and break the cycle. Because yes, hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. Very profound, but very true. I uh, I got lucky in in school. Um, I was very nerdy. I played D and D. I hung around with all the other, you know, brainy kids and stuff like that. But what saved me from being picked on was my art, um, because I was a great artist. All the cliques in school used to kind of give me a free pass because I would draw stuff for them, and <laughs> it, it got me. It got me through high school without getting, you know, pushed into a locker, or, or you know, through middle school and junior high without getting beat up and. You know, I wasn't the most, most athletic guy there, um, so, you know, you, you kind of get pushed down the pecking order. Um, but, yeah, everybody kind of left me alone because they're like, that guy can draw. Don't, don't touch him. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I went to a, a very small friend's school uh, in high school, so I, I, it, it wouldn't say it was exactly picking on. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. no, it wasn't bullying. It was more like picking on, like sort of how adults pick on each other now. Yeah. But, but, but the thing that, and I think I learned was that it was my reaction to the bullies that got them there. You know, is that they wanted to rise, but they were also poking fun, playfully, mm -hmm. and I took that as bullying. Which, in all instances, it is bullying. But like, yeah. when you're an adult, you say, "Well, well, I have, I have, I have a four-month-old son." Everyone says, "Well, thank God he doesn't look like you." Now, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I mean, but, but, but I mean, like, you know, yeah, he looks like me a little bit. He's a lot cuter than me, but you know, I understand that. When yeah. you're an adult, you know, when I went off to college freshman year, I everyone's you know, was, you know, making fun of each other and having a good old time. I for the first first semester, I took everything personally. Then I realized, wait, this is how I, this is how people act. This yeah. is not bullying. So I mean, there are bullying, this physical bullying, this like mental, there's abuse where like they're getting. I feel like there's different levels. There's picking on, there's teasing, like yeah. half-heartedly, and then there's then there's like nitpicking, you know. Then there's that kind of bullying where they're just kind of teasing you, but the same thing over and over again. It was picking on at first. Now it's like really teasing you, and they'll focus on that one. Yeah, one thing, thing they, yeah. and then and then there's the physical pushing you into the wall and Facebook stalking you and all like the malicious like. Horrible stuff. So I feel like there's different levels, and I'm mm -hmm. always said, my mom, mom always used to say, "Oh, you're being bullied," and I always lashed out, or I always bullied my mom back, saying, "I'm not bullied. I'm being picked on. It's different." Yeah, because no one wants to be said that called that they were say they were bullied. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I used to say that I was made fun of. You made know, fun. it's just like yeah. and also now there are so many outlets for it, you know, like you said, Facebook, it's like there's cy cyberbullying, yeah. which is so much more passive. It's so much easier. Mm -hmm. Generally, I mean, I don't like to generalize, but you know, a lot of times it feels easier to cyber bully someone because it's not face to face. The only thing about that that is uh, that is a little more powerful. Yeah. Is that those words are out there forever. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Actually, I, do to, I do want to discuss one thing that just kind of came up. It was very interesting. Um, since I'm a I'm a brand marketer, I'm a social media marketer and stuff. So I do with a lot of brands in my area, just north of Philadelphia. And recently, I was accused of cyberbullying another brand. I repeat, I was I was I was accused of cyberbullying another brand by expressing my opinion of that brand. And I want to emphasize that their social media is great because you can criticize brands. Like I had trouble with a life insurance company, and I said, "Look, you lost my business because X, Y, and Z." Mm -hmm. Is that pointing out a fault on their part? Yeah. But you know, but then it's also saying, well, I can't believe you know, comparing this company to this company. They took this out. This company, local company, took it as an offense to them, which is fine. You can take it as an offense. They accuse they accuse me publicly of cyberbullying them, which generated a whole buzz of like, can brands be bullied, or can it you know? And honestly, it's kind of an interesting fact, and not to pull it off of the person bullying and whatnot, but you know, when is Opinion, too much. Like, like there's a point. Like, I mean, with Comcast, for example, I am very verbal. When my com my Comcast is out, I need my internet. It's out. I'm gonna go on Twitter and complain. But Comcast is taking the proactive approach of knowing my phone number by heart. It's probably gonna stick you on their computer and then resetting my router, getting people out here, calming me down, and dealing with it. Whereas I see, I see other brands not just with me, but with other brands not dealing with the bullying very well, you know. And I feel like this goes it's never really back to people. It's, you know, it's I think it's two-sided here. When If you're being bullied, going back to the, the human bullying, it's as much everyone else's fault for not catching on to it, but it's also, I mean, it's the bullied person's fault too for not going out for help. And I mean, not false, a sharp word, harsh word. It's it should be made that so that it's not shameful to go get help is the thing, so that they can get help. Because a lot of times you're not gonna people are gonna see like in high school, what I consider being picked on later in college was just having a good old jolly time and everyone made fun of everybody's in, you know weirdness. Yeah, and I feel like. Having somebody dedicated at that school that is non-judgmental and saying, "Come talk to me," or just goes checks in with people and checks in with the bullies too. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, f I yeah. feel like there should be an outlet where people feel don't feel judged because that feeling judged is hard too. Because the word "bully" has such a negative connotation, and no one wants to be associated with it, even if it's. But look, you said you made making fun of. I was made fun of. Yeah. I said pick on. You know, Billy. What do you? What was your euphemism? My euphemism. You, 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 your, um, your word for bully. Did you use the word bullied when you were I being think bullied? I used, well, when I was being bullied, I just never even talked about it. <laughs> there like, you go. Know, That's it. Just say it. Like I didn't even like refer to it as anything. I just wouldn't talk about it because like they they were like making fun of me and stuff and and uh, well, what I did instead of talking about it, like I, I tried really really hard to like. Uh, like they made fun of my weight when I was younger, so I lost seventy pounds. Let and then uh, turn to a good they, thing. They also made, made fun of me because you know I have attention deficit disorder and a learning disability. So, do I. so I didn't do well in school, in elementary school. So in high school, I took all the hardest courses and I, and I got the highest in every single class instead. So instead you of actually to talking positive. to them, I, yeah. I did all those things instead. There you go. You showed them. You stuck it to them. You know what though? I mean, so here's the thing. This is what's what's so interesting about, and I I'm gonna keep saying the bully ball because it's the whole cyclical thing is like, you know, call me new agey. A lot of people make fun of me, but um, when you put out this negative energy of like, oh, I gotta I gotta prove to that person that I'm you know 
better than that or you know I gotta find my revenge in some way it's like what kind of that's still like circulating this negative energy and what Billy did I mean that's such a positive thing is to to change it around to take that negative energy turn it into something productive turn it into something positive um, um, that's you know I think that that's the best thing that you could mm -hmm. possibly do and I think also I agree with you Seth about having somebody that's non-judgmental that you can go to that people can go and talk to um, at school and uh, with Hey Ugly there's a story that I tell the kids um, during the assembly it's I'm interested in what you think of this story um, there was a, a mom that came to Hey Ugly and told us that her son had been thrown to the ground by someone who was bullying him and kicked in the face repeatedly and when we went to a police officer um, it happened uh, in Michigan City and Hey Ugly went to a police officer at the Michigan City Police Department to ask him what we could do about it the police officer said and he was a friend of ours and he said there's nothing we can do about it unless we have an eyewitness or video footage and what's interesting um, and very sad and scary is that the same things go on at school that when someone's being bullied at school the only way that the principal can really do something about it is if there's eyewitnesses or or or, or some kind of proof um, which is good and bad you know which is good and bad you know and I mean you know so but a lot of people don't want to get involved a lot of the kids that are being bullied you know like Billy kind of shut down don't want to do anything about it so somebody has to be the hero somebody has to be the angel in the situation you know and mm -hmm. the other crazy part of that story that then I tell the kids is that the person that bullied that 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 kid the one who was bullying him that that kicked him to the ground and kicked him in the face they used to be best friends oh. and what we found out is that that boy's parents had just gotten a divorce and that his mom remarried a man who was kicking him in the face and telling him he was stupid oh. and so that's where the empathy learning part of of the hey ugly assembly comes in we talk about that and we say okay so now that you know that the bully was going home every day and being hurt and bullied and that he had this bully ball and had to throw it at his best friend and not only ruin a friendship but I mean do so much more to himself and so much damage to his best friend now how does that make you feel about the bully and of course we get the response you know sometimes it takes a little bit of a conversation about it but of course ultimately the response is oh my god I feel bad for the bully and of mm -hmm. course you do and that's why it's like I agree with you Seth it's not about punishing the bully anymore either you know sometimes somebody does it for attention it's like great great you know fine they 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 called me out great fine I'm just gonna keep doing it again and the next thing you know the kids getting expelled because he's getting more and more physical and then what do we do and how, you know how and at least the bigger things you know what did you say? I mean, that usually leads to bigger things, and like, yes. I mean, I mean, that's part of the thing is like, if this kid was kicking his best friend in the face, and that's that's assault. So I mean, that, I mean, there's bullying, and then there's assault. I mean, pushing your kid into a locker, all right, flushing their head in the toilet. I mean, it's not nice, but yeah, I mean, but, like, but physically kicking someone in the head and possibly causing like, you know, concussion, or like, like major physical harm. I feel like. That's beyond bullying. That's, I mean, it that's is, assault. It is, but at the same time, sorry to get excited. I don't mean to interrupt you, but it, no, that's fine. It is, but at the same time, it's again looking at the what versus the why. Mm -hmm. The what is the assault, but the why is stemming from the same place. Mm -hmm. The why is stemming from, you know, people let out their anger in so many ways, just like there are so many different platforms for someone to bully. You know, the more passive bully is going to go on Facebook and write mean things. The passive bully is the one that, that used to write to me when I was in middle school. When I was new in sixth grade, uh, there was a girl that wrote to me and said, nobody likes you. There's no, not, no, there's nobody that likes you. Just so you know, nobody likes you at school and, and saying all these horrible things to me. That's the passive bully. She couldn't say it to my face. When we saw each other in person, she basically would just ignore me. Mm -hmm. Um... 
And then there's the kid who has so much rage that he has to physically put it out there, you know? But it's all stemming from the same spot, mm-hmm. I think. It's, it's, it's a shame that it exists. I mean, another thing I was thinking about is, like, well, if you have that one person, and they do have those people, they have the, the counselors, but if you have that one person that people can go to that's non-judgmental, now you're being judged by going to that person that's non-judgmental. Someone sees you going there, so it's got to be something that, like, you got to get someone that can do it after hours, you know? Now I'm getting to the logistics of things. But like, you got to do it where it's off c- campus, which is, I'm not sure, even logistically possible. But, you know, like, somehow make it so that it's, like, an after-school program where people can go there where their peers aren't necessarily there. And yeah. Uh, that's that's actually really... I mean, with Hey Ugly, we have a, um, a facilitator's guide, and there's mm-hmm. a, a whole, like, after I go to the schools... You know, st- a lot of students stay in touch with me, which is very cool, you know, on Facebook and Twitter, and I get to see the responses, and we have mm-hmm. pre- and post-surveys that we give them, and we've been seeing such amazing results after these assemblies, um, but also the founder developed um, a guide for the staff to handle bullying mm-hmm. situations after the assembly is gone. Um, is anyone, yeah, is anyone else parents here? Aaron, are you, no? No. I mean, my big, my big, okay, I'm the lone parent here. But being a new parent, my biggest fear is, is Alon, my son, being bullied. I mean, yeah, he's four months old. You can't really bully a four month old. I mean, I'm sure someone would find a way if they were bullies, but generally, like, stealing his rattle, maybe. But, like, I mean, I, my biggest fear is, like, you know, like, I knew how to deal with it for myself. I knew how to, and I can only trust that he will know that down the road. Like, he'll figure out how to deal with it or he'll come to me and stuff like that. But like it's a it's a fear as, as a parent to like, what if this happens to my son? Will I catch it? Like, will I catch it beforehand? Like with me, I'm such an exuberant person that if I shut down and was quiet, obviously there's something wrong because I'm so not that. Mm-hmm. But like you know, ha- see, my son is four months old. I assume he might be somewhat like me. God forbid. And I mean, see, it's self-deprecating. You know, I'm bullying myself here, but like. I, I feel I'm, that's one of my biggest fears is that, like, as a parent, not having that control of sending him off to school and hoping that people are going to be nice to him, you know. And if they're not nice to him, showing him how to deal with it. Because there's so many of these kids that are bullied on Facebook and then they're dead, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and then there's, then there's these kids that are, like, brought up on charges for bullying. And I'm like, you shouldn't bring them up in charges. You should send them to counseling. Because they obviously, there's obviously a reason for it. Putting them in the system is going to make them, now they're going to go to Juvie Hall, and they're going to get bullied, and they get out of Juvie Hall when they're 21, and then they're going to commit crimes. And mm-hmm. I mean, county prison, at least in the United States, and this your house up, in, up by you, Billy, but there, there's people sleeping on the floors of the rec rooms in prisons now. I mean, there's like no room. So yeah. let's try and like, cut it off beforehand. You're, I mean, everything you're saying is totally, I mean, it's, it's just an that whole cycle of everything that you were just talking about, it's all just completely one big cycle and where can we stop it? And, you know, I think that bullying, like, oh, I almost said what I totally am against. I, you know, people think that bullying is inevitable, but the whole thing is, um, so there's, do you guys know the term neuroplasticity? No, uh, luminosity. Huh? Luminosity.com, their commercial. Oh my gosh, yeah, they do. They get into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Free plug. I Lumosity, yes. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, well, okay, there's this great book, actually. Where is it? Uh, I think I loaned it to somebody, but it's the brain that changes itself, and it's like your brain is essentially plastic, and there are certain things that get hardwired like later and everything, and it's a little more difficult to change habits, but... You know, between the the ages of I believe eighteen and twenty four months old, that's when a baby is is really just seeing their surroundings and 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 getting to um, really having their their brain molded by their surroundings. And when if we can if we can start kids off really young, developing an understanding of how to have compassion and empathy for other people, how to be aware of other people, but starting with themselves, how to be aware of themselves, how to be aware of their emotions, recognizing what's happening and why, then we ultimately end up breaking the cycle. And it happens, it's going to happen over time. But right now, I think people just accept 
the inevitability of bullying, and it doesn't have to be inevitable. It's just, you know, boys will be boys, girls are catty, like all these stereotypes, and it's, it's bogus. It doesn't have to be that way. So, Devin, are you saying that bullying has existed for ever, um, but nobody's ever done anything about it? Yeah, I am. In the past? like I'm saying that... Instead of, yeah. What did you say? I said, so, you know, because this bullying existed in the past, mm -hmm. now are we trying to set up these 12-step programs for these kids because nobody's ever tried to help in the past. It's just now we have to change this because of social media and there's a lot more stimuli for kids and so yeah. we have to kind of be more preemptive. Well, I, I think that, you know, maybe it's something that we can help try to reduce because it is something that affects society for probably a long time. It's And there's probably, like, some instances where, where like, more severe bullying occurs, like, perhaps we could just, like, Di like lower the prevalence of it, mm -hmm. rather than think that we have to completely fix society or something. You're not that gonna. Is like You're not gonna. Too extreme. But I think the problem is, is that it's no longer just in school. It's no longer just at the, on the playground. It's at your desk. It's on. Heck, it's next to your. It's next to your bed at night on Facebook on your cell phone. Kids have cell phones. Kids, you know, friend people. I mean. I friend people on Facebook, and now it's trying to weed them out now. But I friend. I had a, I had an open door policy on Facebook where I let everyone be my friend. You mm -hmm. know, and a lot of kids are like that. You know, and yeah. they're like, "Oh, I barely know you," and then that leads to you know, a whole other can of worms. Not just bullies, but creeps, like like creep creeps. But but I'm saying, <clears throat> it's. I mean, they're they're teenagers. They're adolescents for a reason. Their brains are not fully developed. I mean, some people might say that adults' brains are not fully developed. I mean, I've been, I don't think mine's fully developed, you know, but, I mean, it's not, the reason why I think back in the 1950s, you go to the playground, you get pushed by a bully, you go get pushed in a locker, you get your head dunked in, dunked, dunked in the toilet, but you go home, and that's, and that's your safe haven. You go home to you know, June Cleaver, and, you know, you know, Beaver is safe at home, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, you go online, and and parents can I mean in no way am I saying that parents should not let their kids on Facebook. I mean, should they be monitoring it? Like I know my, my younger sister is seventeen, and I mean dad doesn't know how to use Facebook, but I go on there and check it every once in a while. I can't understand what she's saying, but I make sure that there's something that I can understand that's bad. But yeah. um, I mean, you kind of it's it's up to the parents, it's up to the educators, it's up to the police, it's up to the adults to kind of. Stop, be there for the kids. When you're an adolescent, you're, I, mean, I mean, hormones are raging. You don't have a damn clue what's going on. Sorry, I shouldn't have said damn, but you really have a darn clue what the heck's going on in your brain. So, yeah. There's, a, there's not an awareness there, and I think that it's a natural development, too. I mean, like, there are so many things. I'm, I recently re um, found out from somebody that I bullied them, and I don't even remember. There was a girl... And I'm laughing because it's like a fun, you'll, you'll think it's a funny circumstance, but it's not at all. A girl told me recently, who I'm friends with now, that I put cream cheese on her once because I got mad at her and that I like put cream cheese all over her. It's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like that, and that's like, you know, it's cream cheese, I know, but it's, it's not funny. Like it's, 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 uh, it's funny. looking back, it's funny because we're all adults and we're like, I don't even remember. You know, I have no recollection of that because I was that unaware of mm. of of so many things. But you and know if what? I was aware of myself and the way that it was affecting myself and, and the mm -hmm. way it was affecting other people, then a whole world would have opened up and I wouldn't have done that, you know? But yeah, yeah it is brain development, but I also think it's a it's a te it's a learning thing. It's but I also think kids also need to realize I mean it's hard for them to realize that there's more beyond high school. Like, I remember going, I went to the University of Delaware, and I remember, and I went from a small school where I had 26 kids in my class, in my, in my graduating class from high school, I went to a school where I had 5,000 in my class, you know, in the overall grade in freshman year, and I walked into a dorm, and everybody from walks, all walks of life, all different kinds of cliques, the jocks, I mean, my, my floor head was majority football players, all, I have a whole bunch of stories I'm not going to go into, football players, use your own imagination. But um, but seriously, all walks of life, and we're all kind of walking to this. We're away from home, and as much as we don't want to admit it, we're away from our mommies and daddies, 
you know, as much as we don't want to admit that you know, that matters, but we're all kind of like, we well, can do this, but then we're all in the same boat. And people I became good friends with that I would never have been good friends with in high school. So, I mean, I mean as much as everyone says this, it's bad. High school, I mean, anyone who says that, fully says that they loved high school is full of it. Even if you had some fun in high school, and I had some fun in high school, looking back on comparing high school to college, no comparison. High school sucked. <laughs> it's kind of reverse for me. I mean, when I went to, uh, to college, <laughs> I went to a community college, and it wasn't like I made friends with classmates because we didn't have a, we didn't have dorms and everything. I kept my normal friends from high school. Um, and then after I was doing community college, I went out to Boston to go to college, and it was a very small school, art school, where there were only 400 students. And so it wasn't, there wasn't, a, mm-hmm. I had fun, but it wasn't directly related to, mm-hmm. to college. As it, but in high school, it was much more fun for me, because you're surrounded by your peers all the time, and you really get to know these people. So I know everybody's circumstances are different. But yeah, I think, I'm sure, idea. I'm sure, but Aaron, I'm sure there are still circumstances where you were put in, in uncomfortable situations. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure community college when all your high school friends were all kind of going off to college, and mm-hmm. I'm sure community college with all your high school friends was different from being in high school with all your high school friends. Oh, yeah. were all, and that's what I'm saying. It's like just being out of that pubescent period and actually, freshman year, you're still in your pubescent period. But, you, you know yeah. I mean? You're kind of yeah. growing up a little bit more. You have a little bit yeah. more freedom from your parents. I feel like everyone's kind of evolving. Like, the one jock that may have not been too into your art may have been a little bit more into your art because he's yeah. taking an art history class on, on the history of comics and sort yeah. of now appreciate what you did, you know? So it, it's, yeah. an exp- it's a lum- luminosity, so... One of the ways that I was bullied when I was younger is that, like, I was, like, excluded from, like, the main group, and the thing is that, like, the people, like, a lot of people, like, in, like, around grade 8 and stuff, like, they want to be part of, like, the, like, main group, and if, like, the popular people exclude you, they want to also exclude the same people as the popular people are, so then... It's like they all like take on the same like thought, and then they all like do the same thing to you. And that's yeah. kind of like how I was like, and then I was like all alone every time Ugh. during lunch. You just keep getting knocked further and further down the ladder. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I think my I just think my my whole experience was different because I went to such a small high school that, like, you made you made it you made your high school experience what you wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. Like, like we didn't have a school paper, so I made the school paper. We didn't have a school store, so I made the school store. Like, so is it, we were able to do it because there was only I think in the whole school. I think there's, I don't remember. I used to remember. I think there was like two hundred, like a hundred kids or two hundred kids in the whole entire school. You know, seven through twelve, two hundred kids. So I mean, it was like really small school. So you mean you were friends? Like, if you didn't click with people in your class. You could look at the grade above you. You could look at the grade below you because it was so small. You couldn't escape each other, which is good and bad, too. So. Yeah. So, so Devin, um, you, you also wanted to bring up how you need, like, some more funding for your upcoming album and how that, like, ties into uh, the Hey Ugly. Yeah. Um, so... I have a, a, a crowdfunding campaign going right now for a rock. It's a Rocket Hub campaign, which you know some people can, you know, it's kind of like a Kickstarter or pledge music. It's RocketHub.com, um, and I'm raising funds now to uh, record my new album that I'm very excited about. Um, and I had a meeting yesterday with the producer. And it's I'm so I'm so excited about this album, um, and it's all gonna tie in with the bully prevention. If I can if I can raise the money that I want to raise, then it's gonna look really good for Hey Ugly also. Um, so yeah, so I have I have it pulled up here. I'm scared because of what my computer was doing before to do the screen share. Um, should I give it a shot? I'll, I'll do it. I'll pull it up if you want. Thank you so much. Go to uh, RocketHub.com. Yeah. Slash. Uh, you can actually just go right to the main page, yeah. and then in the top right corner at the search bar, just type in Devin Rush, D-E-V-Y-N-R-U-S-H. There we go. 
All right, let me just share the screen so people can see this on. Screen that, share. Yeah. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna get massive um like looking in words. See, there oh. we go. Nice. Whoa. Right, there we go. Yeah. So click right on that on that picture there, and you'll get to see the the whole page. Yeah. And you need twenty five thousand. Oh, we got guys. Come on. Come on. Pick it up. Wow. How how no. much time do you have to for this campaign? I have until April twenty fifth, so I have just about a month. Um, I, I, people have been very generous so far, but as you can see, it's definitely not wow. at the goal. And that yeah. that money, if I can raise this money, you guys, I, it's going to cover my um, my recording expenses. It's going to cover my touring expenses. It's going to help with the bully prevention school tour. Um, a song that I'm going to do for you guys in a few minutes is called Runaway, and I wrote that for for um, bully prevention. And it's so, you know, my music is is very, it's, you know, re well-rounded in that it's not all about bully prevention, but having the funding for this album um, is going to really, really help Hey Ugly in a lot of ways. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You know, and uh, of course, you know, reposting the link is is seems to be what's even you know most important because I know that there are people that don't know me and wouldn't understand, but if they you know, or or wouldn't you know that don't know me, so they wouldn't you know donate right away. But there's that new video, Seth. If you pull that um, if you pull that up, I just made a brand new video. Oh, uh, where is that? Where are you there? It's right on that main page for the Rocket Hub. All right, watch um, out. Here we go again. This is so cool. Hyper oh yeah. So if you if you watch that video, it's just three minutes long, but it shows everything, like the whole reason why I make music, the whole reason why I'm doing the bully prevention stuff, and it's three minutes long, and it's a fun video to watch. So if that can all be just reposted yeah. through everybody's social networks, then we can make this. Fuck like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for doing no, that. No problem. I'll share it once I figure out where do I put the hangout. Too many tabs. There we go. Sweet. So, thank you guys. Thanks, Billy. Thank you for um, bringing awareness to this issue. I think it's so important. You know what's crazy is um, I live, I I live in an area um of New York. There's a bridge um, that um, right near me that a boy, uh, Tyler, uh, jumped off of um, because he was bullied. Um, he he had uh, he was gay, and I think the story is that his roommate took some pictures. Oh, Tyler Clemente. Yep. Oh the, the yeah, George Washington okay. Bridge. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. I wasn't. I didn't know how specific I should get, but yeah, Tyler Clemente. Sorry, well, you got well. Oh no, no, I, no I, absolutely no. I'm, it's I'm right. in Philadelphia, so where did that? Seth, where, Seth, where in Philly are you? Because I'm from I'm, New Hope, Pennsylvania. Where are you from? I'm from New Hope. I'm from. I live in Doylestown. You live in Doylestown? <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh, from Yard, I'm from Yard. I'm from Yardley. I'm from Yardley, born and raised. Oh, we're that's so that's small so world. Funny. That's hilarious. Wow. Well, yeah. So now, but um, the yeah, the George Washington Bridge, Tyler. So you so you went to you went to Salisbury. Enough of that now, but yeah. Oh yeah, I, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, but yeah, with uh, so so you know, it's it's it really resonates the whole everything. Just uh, in October during Bully Prevention Month, they have the the bridge is lit purple for Tyler, and it's you know it's like this just it this whole thing means so much to me because of what I went through but because like it's almost becoming a trend now that it's like the answer is just to run away from the problem the answer is just to it isn't. and it's not it's it's because you know um, when when I was being bullied in middle school I don't like getting into statistics so much but because of because of the work that I do I know the statistics of it and there are a hundred and sixty thousand kids a day go home um, early from school because they're being bullied and that's three million a year three million a year I believe is what the math is but it's definitely a hundred and sixty thousand kids a day um, 
average. And when I was younger, I used to go to the nurse's office and I used to tell her I was sick. And when she would say, I, you don't have a fever, I would say, no, I have to go home. And I would, I, I had to go home. And the problem was that I didn't know when I was 11 is that when I got home and I was away from the bully, the person I had to deal with the most was me. And you're, you're I hate bully. Myself. Right. So like you said, you know, nowadays, not all, you know, when you get, it used to be that when you got home, you were getting away from, from those external bullies. Now you get home and you have Facebook at your fingertips. You have every, you have, you have this bullying world at your fingertips, but the, the even bigger, the even more focused issue that we have to help these people, people in general with is that you're the one that you have to deal with the most at the end of the day and you can mm -hmm. never get away from yourself. And so if you can fill yourself up and with the awareness up, yeah. and that love, then that's what you're going to give to other people and that's what you're going to be able to receive. Um, and what's ironic is that, well not ironic, but it's kind of something about if people don't know New Hope, um, New Hope is the most probably, other than the village in New York, it's very eclectic. And you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, I mean, hate goes through town every once in a while, but it's a very accepting town. It's a very yeah. fun. It's a, it's a great town. It's a great and, town, yeah. And it's small. So, I mean, well, so I lived in Philly. I lived in Philly before. When, uh, I repeated sixth grade because I was being bullied so bad. So when I was in seventh grade, we moved to New Hope from Philadelphia. Wow. And then... I repeated sixth grade, um, so I was in seventh grade and then was in sixth grade when I got to New Hope. And I went from one extreme to the other. In Philadelphia, the school was really huge, oh. and everybody was so mean. I mean, I had 30 kids in my homeroom, and they were all, I felt, I, I used to go home and say, well, if, if, if they're all saying this stuff, it must be true. And mm -hmm. then we moved, and I was in this really tiny school where all these kids grew up together, and I was the outsider, and it was like a hundred kids now in my grade, and it was so. And I'm, I'm now looking back, now I'm happy that I experienced both of those things because I can relate to the big schools and the small schools when they go mm -hmm. and you know do my concert for them. Mm -hmm. Well, I just funded you, so there you go. What? I just funded you, so there you go. <laughs> Cool. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Um, looking forward to getting that email notification. It's always so exciting, you know, in the morning when I get up and I check my email and I see, you know, Bracket Hub has been funded and it's, it, people have been so generous and I, I know that it's an important, a, a good cause. And I mean, you know, so many, so many artists um, are, are independent nowadays and uh, doing these crowdfunding campaigns in general just you know for their music and that's I think reason enough to I always like to help out whenever I can because music I mean God music um, I mean I talk about it in the video on my Rocket Hub but that's what saved my whole life music just whenever I don't know how I'm feeling or if I do I like I sit down at the piano and write a song and it makes everything better and when I can scream my face off and sing it makes me feel better you know everybody needs to find that so musical time for musical stuff yeah musical time yeah, yeah. All right, looking forward to hear you hear your music. Awesome. Um, I've got my guitarist, my first first and foremost one of my best friends, but second secondarily my guitarist who's amazing with me. He's in the kitchen. Come out from the kitchen. Come on, we got songs to do. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> we're waiting for you. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, it's here. my it's from my printer. This is Andrew Miramonti, aka Monty Fresh. And uh We lost sound. Mm, yeah, we lost sound. What? You don't hear you. <laughs> That's kinda of ironic. Yeah, <laughs> now we're gonna hear our musical guest and bam, no sound. There's nothing. And, there's, and Tibby's not by, so he can't, like, sing. <laughs> but uh, did you, like, mute yourself? Or did, did you, like, uh, have a mic uh, have a microphone and, and, and check it, it out? out? Is this better? Yeah, there we go. Hey! Uh, 
Okay, okay, we're on studio mode. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, you just you switched the studio? Yeah. Okay, I have already changed the mic I, uh, I hadn't, but now I just, I just got rid of the external mic that I had because it was messing with things. So is that better? Uh, well, well, we can, we can hear, you, hear now. you now. Cool, yeah. You yeah, hear ourselves, too. too. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's because she's in studio mode. mode. Yeah. Just because you're in studio mode. Yeah. But, uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll sound, sound the same, same through this microphone. Um, should we give a, a, a song a go? Uh, Andrew's just yeah. checking his tune, tunage. So, um, can you guys hear me? Oh, actually, I'll, I'll, move here. I'll go into here. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm in voice mode so I can tell you about the song. The first one's called, um, the first one's gonna be called Run For Your Money. And uh, I just, I wrote it recently. It's gonna be on this new album that I'm raising the funds for. Um, <laughs> ironic, Run For Your Money. <laughs> um, but it's, a, it's about a situation, it's kind of a sassy song. It's about a situation where uh, hypothetically, like, you know, what would happen <laughs> if I met a, a guy that thought, um, you know, okay, I met a guy and he was, he, you know, he was a wealthy guy and I, I think that he thought that I was only interested in him because he was wealthy because I think that's what he's used to. Um, but I was interested in him because he was an awesome person. So this song is kind of like a, uh, it's a, it's, it's the story of kind of just, you know, wanting to be with somebody just because of the person they are in spite of the fact that they think that you want to be with them because of some other reason. So this is called Run For Your Money. I'm going to go into studio mode. I Rich boy with all your toys 
That was run for your money. That was great. Thank you so much. Uh, this next one will slow it down. Too soon to know. Um, this is another song that's going to be on the new album called Too Soon to Know. Uh, and basically the idea with this one is that we're sometimes so stuck in the past and sometimes so stuck in the future of situations in general in our lives. and. Nothing like the present of just, you know, sometimes just recognizing exactly where you're at right now. So it's called Too Soon to Know. I'm going back in the studio mode. Mm. Right. I put his pretty face in here. found a kind of calm and it finally feels right not too hung up when I think of you but I like that this is all so new I don't need to know about our future all I have to know is that you're with me now one of us should find something that's better I know that what we have is what this has been about So don't lose your mind over me It's still too soon to know Still, it's 
still too soon to know Thank you. <laughs> oh, so, so great. great. I'm just trying to switch back to voice mode. Ah. Uh, and then this last song that we're going to do, save, save this one for last, is called Runaway. And uh, it's one of the songs that I sing when I go to schools. Oh, and also, um, if if you're if you are interested in booking this assembly at a school near you, um, you can just email preventbullyingnow. I'll type it here at heyugly.org. Preventbullyingnow at heyugly.org. Uh, Betty Hefner is the person uh, you'll be writing to. She's the founder of the organization and. Um, where you know the organization's getting bigger and, and bigger and I would love to you know anywhere you guys are I get on a plane all the time and it's fun just came from Indiana and Chicago and uh, in November it was Louisiana so it's um, it's a lot of East Coast right now uh, next month there's gonna be some West Coast stuff so all over the place let's do it uh, this is called Runaway How you doing? He's got a tune a little. <laughs> a lot. A lot. I think it's, I think it's beautiful. No additional charge. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So this is Runaway. I should say I co-wrote this one also. Run for Your Money I co-wrote with Janice Fitzgerald and Jen Marks. And this one I co-wrote with Hugh Colica and Jimmy Santos. So 
deep You can't get out of it You can't see the sun But just breathe Just know you're not alone in all of this No need to And I have no clue. Like th that's a new app that was launched this week. And I, 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 according to what I just heard from the chat here, it's like, wait, the cameras went off. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, we go. go. <laughs> I got. We got some cool photos. I don't know if they can even see us for some reason. Like, uh, Lauren, can no. you like, close the app? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I don't, yeah, no. It, it, it popped up and it said. It said Seth was taking a, a photo, and then I have to say, like in the show guide, don't turn on that damn new app. Well, I, I don't even know if, if if the recording is still working. No, it but is. It is. Anyway, what happened? What happened? I didn't hear really part of this. Anyway, it has been hours, so it's go time. And I thank you, Devin. That was an awesome song. It was like, yeah, that was really incredible. Amazing. It was awesome, yeah. And uh, we'll be back in next week and have some really interesting guests. And hopefully, this is still being recorded. I don't know. It is. Well, it looks like it's being recorded, but I don't know what, what people are saying. Yeah, I am watching the YouTube stream.